Welcome to Digital Worship here at LaGrange First United Methodist Church. I'm Andrea, one of the pastors here, and I just want to welcome you to worship. Our mission here at the church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And we do that by living out our vision that as active followers of Jesus Christ, we are dedicated to reaching out and sharing God's love and hope with families and those in need. It's my hope that wherever you are tuning in from today, that you will be able to feel God's love and presence here with you. I now invite you to hear a few of the ways that you can connect with us uh, throughout the week. We want to remind you that in addition to this digital worship, we are also offering a couple other worship opportunities on Sunday mornings. They both occur at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. We invite you to come to the church parking lot where you, you can listen uh, to the service that's happening in the church. And there will there's a FM radio station that will be posted there and you can tune into that station. Or we invite you to join us for in-person worship. It's being held in the fellowship hall. But if you are interested in joining us for in-person worship, we ask that you would please uh, call the church office by noon on Thursday to be able to let us know that you're coming and we will have the chair set up for you. The church office number is 463-2859. We also ask that while we invite you and, and encourage you to meet here for worship, um, we are keeping track of who is in the building for contact tracing uh, reasons. And so, and because we set up the space for you. And so to help us be able to be hospitable to you and to help keep everyone safe, if you're going to hold a meeting or a Bible study or class here, we ask that you would call the church office and let Anita know prior to that, and then that you would turn in your um, a list of the people attending. Uh, and we thank you for your flexibility and cooperation with that. We have an exciting opportunity. It's been a little while since we've had discipleship opportunities in person. Uh, Susan Miller is offering a chance for us to be able to explore how practicing gratitude changes our outlook on life. Uh, she's going to help us to be able to start a gratitude journal if you've never kept one or maybe if you kept one for a while and you've kind of fallen off away from that discipline. So buy a notebook to use and call the church office uh, to reserve a spot or call Susan Miller and both the numbers are on the screen. Uh, church members and friends are all welcome. We will have health precautions in place and ask that you wear a mask. And if you're not comfortable meeting in person, but you're interested in that, um, also let us know that because we may be able to make something happen digitally. This class will start on September 3rd, will last three weeks, September 3rd, 10th, and 17th, and we'll meet from 1015 a.m. to 11 a.m. One other uh, way that you can connect is by supporting our preschool. Bright Beginnings Preschool is a ministry of our church and as we are ramping up for the school year, the preschool starts after Labor Day and so they have put together an Amazon page where if you would like to be able to give items that they can use through the school year, right, in addition to just giving a general donation financially, um, you could go to their Amazon page and purchase an item and it will be shipped to the church. And if you are interested in that, please make sure you check the introduction section to this post as the link will be posted there. We hope that you'll get involved and support the ministries of our church. Again, we welcome you for worship and ask that you'll pray with me. 
O Lord, you bind us together in love to learn and to be healed, to grow and to serve. Be with us this day and open our hearts to the amazing opportunities to help others through the gifts that we possess. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Indeed, our God is faithful. It's why we trust him with our hearts in prayer. And so today, as we prepare to pray together, please comment to this post with any joys or concerns that you may have. You may also send prayer requests by email to any of the addresses on the screen, or you can call the church office. We will share these requests and pray specifically for each request in our midweek prayer time on Wednesdays at noon. What a joy it is to go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. When we aren't sure, God, help us to be calm. When fear makes it hard to breathe and anxiety seems to be the order of the day, slow us down, God. Help us to reach out with our hearts when we can't touch with our hands. Help us to be socially connected when we have to be socially distant. Help us to love as perfectly as we can, knowing that perfect love casts out all fear. 
And Lord, for those who are sick and those who are grieving, we pray. And Lord, for people all around the world, we pray for safety, for health, for wholeness. Help us, O oh God, that we might help each other. And hear us as we boldly pray together the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God is. The Lord your God is a consuming fire. The Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you or forget the covenant with your forefathers, which he confirmed to them by oath. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commands. God is. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge and my savior. God is exalted in his power. Who is a teacher like him? God is. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains will fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. God is. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. The Lord your God is with you. He is a mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. God is. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in him. God, God is. is. Our God is a generous God who always gives to each one of us the best. In gratitude for all that God has done for us and given to us, we return a portion of these gifts to God that they may be used in service to others. Let us receive our offering this morning. You're invited to give by mailing a check to the church office or by giving online using the link in the introduction of this section. May God bless the gifts that we offer him.
The scripture reading today is Acts 10, 34 to 43. Peter began to speak. I now realize that it is true that God treats everyone on the same basis. Whoever fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him, no matter what race he belongs to. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, proclaiming the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know of the great event that took place throughout the land of Israel beginning in Galilee after John preached his message of baptism. You know about John, Jesus of Nazareth and how God poured out on him the Holy Spirit and power. He went everywhere doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil for God was with him. We are witnesses of everything that he did in the land of Israel and in Jerusalem. Then they put him to death by nailing him to a cross. But God raised him from death in three days later and caused him to appear not to everyone, but only to the witnesses that God had already chosen, that is, to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from death. And he commanded us to preach the gospel to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God has appointed judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets spoke about him, saying that everyone who believes in him will have the sins forgiven through the power of his name.
John Wesley had three basic principles that shaped how he lived his life. He believed a few disciplined practices would lead to faithfully following Jesus Christ. Pastor Chris and I are challenging you to join us in exploring these three simple rules. Why? Well, they are helpful for each of us as we seek to live out our faith in this changing world. So if you weren't here last week, take time at some point to go back to the Facebook archives and listen to the digital service because Pastor Chris preached about the first rule, do no harm. Today we're covering the second rule, do good. And then make sure not to miss next week because Pastor Chris will share with you the third and final rule. Before we get our exploration, will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Friends, today I want to start off with a bit of interaction. So are you awake still? Are you ready to think and share? When Think about the last time someone did something good for you. What did that person or group of people do? Ready, set, share. I invite you to share by commenting on the Facebook section because we can't hear what you're saying in your living room. And I would like to be able to hear this interaction. I hope it wasn't a hard exercise for you. And in fact, I hope the conversation about the good that people have done lately continues to be a conversation that you have over lunch or later today. But if you are one who can't think of anything good that someone's done for you, then what good have you seen people do for others recently? And if you can't answer either of those questions, then I challenge you to intentionally watch for people doing good this week. Because sometimes it's, over, it's easy to overlook those small acts of goodness that people do. This week I read that we as United Methodists have a rich legacy of doing good. And you know, that's really true. To give you a little United Methodist history, uh, John Wesley was the founder of the United Methodist Church. And before he came to America, John Wesley attended college at Oxford University. And there he joined with four other guys to read scripture and to pray together. And they called themselves the Holy Club. The Holy Club recognized that social justice and social work is an essential part of Christian life. And they often took time to visit impoverished families and to help in the schools. And that continued then as John started his ministry. He regularly visited people in prison or hospitals, and he really advocated to make sure that people had a chance to earn an education. We as United Methodists value our connectional nature. We have in the past and we continue to work together to establish schools and hospitals around the world. You know IU Health? Yeah, we helped start that hospital. And we offer aid to those whose homes or communities have been destroyed by natural disasters through the United Methodist Committee on Relief. Did you know that that committee is actually collaborating with health professionals, missionaries, disaster management coordinators, and faith leaders to allow for a global response to COVID-19. From the Philippines to Pennsylvania to Brazil to Burundi, people's daily needs such as healthcare, food and hygiene, and job security are being met. And then through the efforts of United Methodist Women, they help us to organize together to reach out and help women and children in need. Friends, I could go on and on, but my point remains that we as United Methodists have a rich legacy of doing good. And I'm grateful to say that here at First United Methodist Church in LaGrange, we help continue this legacy from prayer shawls to food to notes of encouragement to financial assistance to visiting people 
and so much more. We join in this legacy of doing good. Now it's important to note that we do not do these good works to earn our salvation, but rather to thank God and to become a vessel for God's grace to reach others. The spiritual discipline do good seems easy, but honestly it can be difficult. We can worry how, about how successful our efforts will be or whether people will take advantage of us if we try to help them. But in the end, doing good is doing good, but it can push us out of our comfort zones. In today's scripture, we see Peter pushed outside his comfort zone. In the scripture lesson, he was preaching, which really, that's not uncommon for him. However, did you catch who his audience was? Normally, Peter preached to the Jews in the synagogue, but not in this story. In this story from Acts, Peter is preaching to the Gentiles, more specifically to the household of Cornelius. That means his friends and his family. Cornelius was a Roman soldier. And as Pastor Alan Brim pointed out in a sermon that I read, he pointed out that probably a short time earlier in Antioch of Syria, he had refused to even eat with Gentile believers converted by Paul's ministry. You can see that in Galatians chapter 2. But here we are in this home where he consented to go to this unfamiliar place because God had specifically commanded him in a vision to do so. And then the pastor continued saying, I'm not sure Peter knew what to expect when he went so far outside his comfort zone. All he knew was that he had been commanded to go. When was the last time that you took a big risk outside your comfort zone? Well, Peter arrived. Cornelius told Peter that he had a dream commanded by God to seek him out and to listen to whatever he had to say. And it was then that a light bulb went off for Peter. He realized that God wanted him to tell them the good news about Jesus. Peter not only told them about Jesus, but he told them that God doesn't show favoritism. He explained that God loves everyone, no matter what race or background. Likewise, Peter shared that he was there with them today because God had revealed that no person was unfit to associate with. So he was now willing to be with Gentiles. Can you imagine what Cornelius' household thought as they heard Peter say these things? I'm sure it threw him a bit off because most of the Jews treated them like second-class citizens. But here Peter is showing them respect, telling them that God is for everyone, even the Gentiles. Church, Jesus' death and resurrection changed everything and everyone. It was the first act in making all things new. And Peter is just one life who was changed. He took seriously Jesus' command to go and make disciples of Jesus Christ. Sometimes one of our greatest challenges here in the church is that we don't like change. We tend to stay in our comfortable and familiar routines. Well, guess what? It's 2020, and every comfortable and familiar routine has been uprooted. At first, we thought we were just giving up that familiar routine for a couple of weeks, but weeks have turned to months, and here we are. Life has changed, and it's safe to say that many of us grieve the loss that we're experiencing. Some of us just want things to go back the way they were. Others of us may see that there's a new reality, but we aren't really sure what's next. It's hard to make plans because there's no assurance that those plans will be safe to carry out. So church, here we sit at a crossroads. Do we sit on our hands and wait until there's a vaccine or some other point at which we feel life will be safer? It's tempting, believe me. Or do we as a church find a new or different way to safely live out our faith amid this pandemic? My prayer and my hope is that we will all choose to come together as a church and find new and different ways to grow in Christ and to live and share our faith. I don't know about you, but I know I need God right now. 
And I know that others are hurting and need God too. I just read this week that according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, that 25.5% of Americans age 18 to 24 seriously considered suicide in the past 30 days. Friends, our neighbors need Jesus too. So how are we going to share Jesus with people? It starts with doing no harm and with doing good. Bishop Reuben Joe wrote, I do not need to wait until circumstances cry out for aid to relieve, su relieve suffering or correct some horrible injustice. I can decide that my way of living will come down on the side of doing good in all and every circumstance and in every way that I can. Friends, will you join me in looking for ways that we can share God's love this week? Let's do good now. We may not have it all figured out, but there are ways in which we can bless others now. Join me in sharing God's amazing love with every person that we meet. Amen. Receive now the benediction. The world awaits the love and gifts that you have to offer. Go forth in joy and peace to be God's witnesses this day and all your days. Amen.